Hey guys, my name is Tom and in this video I'm excited to show you four really, I think, unique, I would almost call them specialty lenses for micro four thirds cameras. So uh, this is going to work with your ZKM-E2, uh, maybe GH5, or in my case I used it with the Blackmagic Packet 4K camera. So what are these four lenses? Uh, the first one, the smallest one, is from Laowa. It's a four millimeter uh, fisheye lens uh, and it creates a really crazy kind of a unique look which I'm gonna get into and show you guys some samples. The next one I have up here is from Siriu. It's an anamorphic lens. It's actually one of the smallest, lightest and most affordable anamorphic lenses on the market right now and it's a 50 millimeter 1.33 uh, aspect ratio uh, anamorphic. Next one I've got up here is a really nice uh, cinema zoom lens. It goes from 20 to 70 millimeter. Uh, it's from DZO Film uh, and again like all of them it's for micro four thirds so I found it very useful with my packet 4k camera because it allowed me to quickly kind of basically have one lens on there but it's almost as if you have a whole bunch of set of lenses in the most commonly used focal fields. And like I said 24 to, to uh, 70 millimeters. And then the last lens up here that I have is from Vazen and it's an anamorphic lens uh, and it's obviously not as small as this one and not as cheap as this one but it's still very very cheap when you compare it to other uh, like mainstream anamorphic lenses. Uh, this one has an aspect ratio of 1.8x so a little bit wider aspect than this uh, anamorphic and because of that it creates a m bit more of a pronounced anamorphic look. So let me move these lenses aside and I kind of go one by one. <laughs> So the first one from Laowa, uh, like I said, it's a tiny little lens that's, uh, I mean, it's it's unique in many different ways. It's definitely a lens that you're you're only gonna use for those special special occasions. And what I mean by that is, uh, it is so crazy wide at four millimeters, even on a micro four thirds uh, camera. It's so wide that uh, if you were to use the full micro four thirds, you know, more or less size of an image sensor. Uh, you'd be seeing actually past the camera or past basically the, the lenses uh, here, the front element. So meaning you'll actually be able to see your hands <laughs> as you're holding the camera. You can even see your feet uh, if you're hand holding the camera. So that's how crazy wide it is. Uh, you definitely want to crap in on that. So it's going to work better with some cameras than others. I still think it's fun to play around with this. Uh, I used it on the packet 4K uh, camera from Blackmagic. But in that camera, I have to crop in quite a bit. I'm uh, basically shooting at 1080p mode, which is good because then it allows me to shoot slow motion and all that stuff. Now, just keep in mind, this is fisheye lens, means it distorts like crazy. Um, so if you want that kind of look, again, you know, it's kind of a cool thing to have. The reason why I got this is because, like I said, it's a specialty lens. I like to always have these just in case you never know when you're going to use them. And it's very cheap, very affordable. Um, the build quality of it is good. It's all like, I think, aluminum. Uh, now it is very tiny. So to operate the focus, you actually have this little tab here. And you basically just turn this tab with your finger because otherwise you'd be kind of getting, you know, uh, you can even hold it up here because you'd see your fingers. Now the front element here, uh, the ring, that's actually for aperture, so you can change it from f2.8, so it is a pretty fast lens, all the way to f16. Uh, and then uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, there's really not much else to say. One thing I will t say though about this lens is you want to be careful when you're transporting it, because uh, basically it does come with a nice lens cap. It's actually also a aluminum, you know, solid feeling lens cap, and it has a little cutout there for the, for the focus, you know, uh, nub. So it fits nicely over it, but, and like when, you, when you're going like this, it's not going to fall over. But if you grab it by this lens cap, which is kind of hard not to do because pretty much this lens cap covers most of the lens. So I would say you always want to grab it here by the, the back mount here. Because if you grab it by this lens cap, because you can see it falls out very easily. And I did drop this lens once like that. Thank God nothing happened to it. But again, this is something that you definitely want to be careful with. Uh, anyways, now let's jump on to the next lens here in the lineup, which is... Uh, this anamorphic lens. So like I said, it's a 1.33 uh, squeeze ratio or aspect ratio. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what anamorphic lenses are, those are lenses that basically shoot a wider field of view and then they squeeze that image onto uh, your image sensors. So if you're shooting on a 16 by 9 or basically full frame uh, micro four thirds image sensor, uh, you're going to get uh, this kind of a uh, aspect ratio. And then it does give you those anamorphic uh, characteristics. So number one thing is probably 
Uh, most people are looking for, uh, in anamorphic lenses for are the flares. So you get those horizontal flares. And yes, they're there. Now, one thing to keep in mind uh, is that the flares are very noticeable on this lens. And if you were to ask me the good and the bad, I would say the good is the image quality on this. This is like by far probably one of the cleanest looking anamorphic lenses. Because at, um, at the end of the day, anamorphic lenses, because they distort the image here at the front, like I said, they kind of have to squeeze it uh, in to fit it on that image sensor. So because of that, anamorphic lenses are never going to be as sharp as spherical lenses. Uh, they also create other little artifacts here and there. And some of them uh, is what people who love shooting anamorphic uh, are actually after. They don't want that kind of a perfectly clean image. I also don't like an image that's overly sharp and perfect. That's why when I'm shooting with really, really sharp uh, glass, whether it's anamorphic or spherical lenses, I usually put some kind of softening filters and things like that. Well, in this case, I'll tell you that if you want to shoot anamorphic and you want to get a very sharp, crisp image, this thing, th this lens is gonna is gonna do it for you because it is it is anamorphic, but doesn't have that crazy distortion. Like I said, it's only 1.33 uh, squeeze ratio, and it does uh, produce very sharp images. And all these examples you're seeing up here, they're shot wide open at f 1.8. Uh, so even wide open, this anamorphic lens performs very well. Uh, and that's something, again, if you have experience shooting with anamorphics, you'll know that usually you cannot shoot with anamorphics all the way uh, open because it's just going to be very soft image and uh, not to mention it's going to be almost impossible to keep focus. But this lens, amazingly, in this small factor, this small size and weight, manages to do that. So it's very cool in that sense. Uh, it does produce those oval bokeh. Now just keep in mind that it is, again, a 1.33 uh, squeeze ratio, so it's not as much as like a two times, you know, of anamorphic lenses. And because of that, the uh, bokeh is not going to be as oval. Now, it does produce the horizontal lens flares. They are nice and blue. But just be aware of the fact that this lens flares like crazy. If you want a lot of flares, then great. You'll get it with this lens very easily. Personally, I was very uh, just amazed at the fact uh, that they were able to deliver an anamorphic lens in that small of a package and that light. Now, if you're wondering if you can attach uh, filters to the front of this, then yes, you can. It has a threaded 67 millimeter uh, front basically thread here so you can attach variable ND filters and things like that. Um, now let me maybe jump to the next lens in the lineup, the the bigger one, not the, not the biggest in the bunch here, and that's this really really cool zoom lens uh, from DZO Films, uh, and this is a 20 to 70 millimeter zoom lens. What I like about this lens is, is that it's just solidly built, well thought out, and produces you know, really good image quality. When you're just looking at the construction of the lens, uh, you'll notice that the three rings here for the focus, uh, the zoom, and then the aperture control, uh, they're all geared. It's a standard pitch gear ratio of 0 0.8. Uh, so it's going to work with your standard follow focus accessories. Uh, and the first ring here is the, the focus ring. It's very smooth. It has a nice big throw, so it allows you to basically get you know get, get your focus spot on perfectly. Um, the here the zoom uh, ring also, as you can see, is geared. What I like is that they give you this little thing here, this little knob. Uh, so a lot of times I would just use that to kind of zoom in and reframe my shots, and it just produces beautiful you know again uh, image quality throughout the full zoom range. And if you set the back focus correctly, it will actually keep your focus on the on the on your subject as you're zooming in and out, which is uh, very important. And then this here ring, that's for your aperture. Again, it's not step down uh, aperture ring like you have in photography lenses. This is a cinema lens, so it gives you a nice smooth, um, basically here a turn, uh, which again means that if you want to adjust your aperture in the middle of your take, you can do it smoothly. Uh, the last ring here is for your back focus, so that's how you would uh, adjust that. And then you do have a little knob here that, again, you can uh, tighten or loosen it. So once you find it perfectly, you just lock it. Uh, the front of the lens is threaded. It's a 77 millimeter threading up there. So again, you can put your variable NDs and all that stuff. And I would say that that's kind of where I like using this lens is that because it gives you this nice range, of 20 to 70 it's i mean i usually film most of the time in like around somewhere around 50 millimeters uh but it's always nice then to have to, you know be able to to zoom out or zoom in a little bit more if you need to uh and still not have to worry then basically about let's say if you attach a variable and filter in the front or if you have a matte packs even or whatever you don't have to worry about taking out the lens refitting your filters or your matte packs things like that 
you just put on your variable ND, in my case, I, which I use with this most of the time, uh, and then uh, put this on your camera and you're ready to go and, and kind of run and gun with this. And I would say this is where it's going to be really helpful having a lens like this. Uh, it's kind of like these run and gun, maybe documentary kind of filmmaking where you want to have the option of very different basically focal lengths all in one lens that you don't need to change, that you can just quickly set up your camera, zoom in, pick out your framing and, you know, just start recording very quickly. The image quality, like you guys can see for yourself, I think it produces really nice images. I also love actually the way that this lens flares when you uh, point it like even straight out into the sun or even artificial lights. It basically just produces, uh, in my opinion, very natural looking flares. They're not too sharp or too mechanical looking. Uh, they kind of bloom nicely. If you have the, 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 for example, in some shots, I had the sun kind of just off angle here and it just gives you this kind of a nice bloom. Uh, yeah, it just, uh, I think it's a nice overall lens. And now is it as sharp as some of these other, you know, cinema zoom lenses on the market that cost 10 times as much as this even? Uh, maybe it's not as sharp, but you know what? It's plenty of sharp for me. I find that I prefer when lenses aren't overly sharp because they almost look like too fake, too, too digital. Now, if I happen to have a lens that's, let's say, very, very sharp, that doesn't mean I'm not going to use it. It just means that in that case, I'm going to put some kind of a softening filter in front. This lens, I find I didn't need to put any filters. It just looks nice, organic, smooth. Like I said, the lens flares are nice. And then it's just a very well-designed fun functional lens. So a great, I think, addition for anybody shooting on, on any micro four-thirds camera. Uh, and definitely if you want to have a nice cinema lens, but kind of have multiple focal lengths all in one lens. So you can, again, work quicker and reframe, you know, set up your shots quicker. Now let's jump into the, the last and the biggest lens of them all, uh, which is from Vazen. And it's the anamorphic lens. And I know there's been a lot of interest in this one. A lot of people were messaging me when they when they saw me post some stuff on, on like Instagram and stuff like that about me working with this lens. What do I think of it and all that stuff? Well, yeah, let me take this off. First of all, it's a big lens, as you guys can see. It's a very big lens and, and very heavy. It's not the biggest anamorphic lens, though. You know, if you've been working with anamorphic, especially for like full frame cameras now or. Uh, or, you know, even super 35 millimeter anamorphics, you'll notice that, uh, again, it's that's just kind of the tendency with anamorphic lenses because of the way that the, the optics operate. Uh, you do have a nice, here, it's a, it's a round uh, front element, and they do give you actually a little ring that you can put under that's threaded, that's 95 millimeter uh, diameter, so it means you can actually attach filters to it like that, but usually with the lens that big, again, 95 millimeters, you're most likely going to work with square or... or uh, basically uh, glass um, filters that you're going to put in your matte packs. Um, that's, I think, the most comfortable way of working with it. Uh, the lens, like I said, is heavy. So don't think that you can put this on any micro four thirds camera and, and think that the, the camera is going to basically support this because it's just going to break off your mount right away. Uh, so you definitely want to support this. So the way, as you can see, my rig is set up. I have uh, rails on the bottom and I have a simple lens support. I'm actually going to be doing a video about my current uh, rig that I use to support this lens, but also just uh, kind of a rig that I have that allows me to switch from working with big lenses like this to something <laughs> tiny like this very quickly. Uh, so that's going to be in a separate video. But like I just said, just make sure you have some kind of a lens support in there because otherwise you're going to, like I said, you'll damage your camera and then you'll damage this lens because once the, <laughs> the mount breaks off, this thing is just going hit to the, hit the ground and I, I don't think it's going to survive very well. Now, is it solidly built? Yes. It's like I said, because of that, it's, it's heavy. But again, if you drop this and the front element hits, then you break the glass and that's it. Um, now, it is a very massively well-built lens. Uh, I mean, it just, again, just the weight of it, but just everything's, you know, metal, just sturdy and everything on it. Uh, I do love the markings on it. Very clear, very easy to understand. It's a fast lens at T2. Now, I'll tell you something that, like, even when shooting with some of these newer anamorphic lenses, like the Atlas, for example, lenses, uh, almost none of them you can shoot with them all the way wide open. Because, again, anamorphic lenses in general are going to be softer, but when you're shooting with them all the way open, then all those extra kind of the, the, the little defects, you could say, or the, the image aesthetic that anamorphic distortion creates, 
uh, is going to be that much more noticeable and sometimes to the point where it just looks your shots look like they're out of focus or just blurry for the shots that you're seeing up here most of them are shot actually all the way open not because that's how i'm actually going to be using this lens on actual let's say production but it was just because i was doing tests for myself and i wanted to make sure that if the need ever arises, can I actually shoot with this anamorphic all the way open and still get a usable image? And as you guys will see, you can definitely get an image that's sharp. This actually reminds me, I would say, to like the vintage Lomo lenses. Those are my favorite anamorphic lenses and they're hard to get, not to mention they're super expensive. And to now have a company that produces an anamorphic lens that's you know brand new everything works perfectly you know when you're working with older vintage lenses sometimes just the maintenance on them or a lot of things break down because they're older this thing whether it's the aperture ring or the follow the, the focus ring uh, it just operates smoothly it is you know solidly built like i said it's still fairly manageable size uh and it's just produces though a very beautiful kind of that vintage organic uh, anamorphic look and that's what i love about th this lens is that it it doesn't look so so mechanical, like some uh, other anamorphics out there, especially the newer anamorphics. It looks very, very organic, and I, I love the way it blooms. When you get a little bit of light there on the corner of the lens, I love the flares in this. They look, they're there, you get those anamorphic, you know, flares, but they're not so, like, up in your face where, you know, they cover your whole shot. They're just, I, I don't know, I just love, I love, love the look of this lens. And then if you want to get those kind of more intimate shots or the shots where, you know, like I said, things are just mostly out of focus and you're just concentrating on one little element in your in your shot even when you you know doesn't matter whether you're doing a close-up of something or you're further away from from a subject again because this lens is so fast and because it is a true anamorphic lens uh, it just has all those characteristics and it lets you create that very very kind of shadow and kind of like i said kind of blurry or more organic kind of look that's what i love about this lens uh, definitely my favorite I think out of all the lenses I've, I've tried right now uh, for micro four thirds cameras I think this is just like it just makes me excited when I'm gonna be shooting with it now what doesn't make me excited is the weight of it the size and like I said focusing with it so if I have an assistant it still helps I mean I hurt my wrist the first day I was shooting with, the, with some tests with this because I didn't have a proper handle and I was trying to just hold the camera how I would normally do with my pocket for you know 4k camera and, uh, and let's just say it wasn't, didn't go well on my wrist. So you'd want to have for handheld work kind of a shoulder rig. Otherwise put it on sticks or some kind of a stabilization. Um, because it is a heavy lens and then you can have, you know, need the rails and the whole rig for it. But if you don't mind working around those kind of things, which you're going to have to do with all anamorphic lenses, then... Uh, then this is definitely a lens for you if you're looking for that unique look. Anyways, hopefully you guys found uh, this video helpful, informational, entertaining. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Click the thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this and see more content and download some of this footage or even have a chance to get some of these gear giveaways that I do, which I only give now to people who follow me through my newsletter, then go to my website and uh, subscribe to my newsletter so you stay up to date. And that's going to be at TomAntosFilms.com. Anyways, that's it for this video and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!